Have you ever wondered how the quantum particle of light, the photon, interacts with matter to produce the world that we experience? Today, I'm going to tell you the quantum rules in which they do so. To understand this better, we'll use some simulations and some tricks from the quantum theory. To begin with, let's say you want to run this experiment. Here, you let photons first reflect off the front surface of the first mirror, then travel through a slit to reflect on either side of the second mirror. Finally, it ends up at the detector. The cross is there to tell us that photons don't reflect off the back surface of the first mirror. We can think of this event as a sequence of two steps. First, a photon goes from the source to the first mirror, reflecting off the front surface. Then, it goes from the slit to either side of the mirror, reflecting off to get to the detector. You see, it's like piecing puzzles together. We will use an arrow to represent each path. We will also use the same rules as previous videos to simulate this experiment. When a reflection occurs, the length of the arrow is scaled down to 0.2. We also turn the arrow by a certain amount, which is determined by the time for each path. Finally, if the path involves a front reflection, that is, a reflection from air back to air, we reverse the arrow. That is all of our rules. To calculate the second step, things get a little tiny bit harder. The photon could have gone through either the front surface or the back surface, so we need two arrows to account for that. They still shrink by 0.2 due to reflection, and they turn by a certain amount. The back arrow turns a little bit more because it goes through a longer distance. Remember, for the middle path, we also reverse the direction, since it has reflected off the front surface. Now, because these arrows represent two different ways a photon could have gone, we need to add them up to give a final arrow of step 2. As a quick summary, step 1 has a length of 0.2 pointing towards 9.5 o'clock. Step 2 has a length of about 0.35 pointing towards 6.2 o'clock. To find the probability of photons actually going this way, we have to somehow combine the red and purple arrows. But how? Well, let's think in terms of shrinking and turning in succession. We will start with a unit arrow. First, we shrink by 0.2 and rotate to 9.5 o'clock. Then, we shrink further by 0.35 and rotate by 6.2 o'clock. This is where the arrow gets really small, and that's why I zoomed in in the first place. The resulting arrow has a length of about 0.07 turned at 3.7 o'clock. According to the rules of quantum mechanics, the probability of an event is the square of the final arrow. So the probability of the whole event happening is 0.07 squared, giving 0.0049. Very unlikely it is. Observing the arrows carefully, we see a pattern. In terms of the length of the arrow, we always multiply the length of two arrows. But when it comes to turning, we add the angles to give the final result. So this would be our rules of multiplying arrows. We scale the arrows successfully, then turn them in corresponding angles. These are basically all the rules for today. Knowing them, you can solve every phenomena regarding light with ease. To see this in action, let's go back to our favorite experiment, reflection from single surface. We have grown to become complex organisms capable of multiplying arrows. Therefore, we'll use arrows to attack this problem. We can divide this event into three steps. First, the photon goes from the source down to the glass. Then, the photons are reflected by the glass. Remember, we flip the arrow because this is a front reflection. And thirdly, it goes from the glass up to the detector. Performing the multiplication, the final arrow looks like this. First, we turn the arrow. Secondly, we shrink it to 0.2 and reverse the direction. Third, we keep on turning it. The final arrow has a length of 0.2, so the probability is 4%. Yay, that would be our first result! So we have completed our first example. But what if we want to calculate the transmission probability? Let us also attack this problem by breaking it down into steps. The first step is the same. The photon goes from the source to the surface. The second one is a little bit tricky. We know that we have to shrink, but by what amount? Recall that the probability of transmission is 1 minus the reflection probability. 
so 1 minus 4% is 96%. The length must be the square root of 0 0.96, which is 0 0.98. The third step is the photon going through the mirror. The combined result of all of this is the final arrow, pointing in some direction with the famous length 0 0.98. The probability is 0 0.98 squared or 96%. We have arrived at our second glorious result. The suspicious viewer might think that we have forced our way to get the number 0 0.98, but we will see that it's actually correct. Let's take a look at partial reflection by two surfaces again. In chapter 2, we deduced that if we shine light on a mirror, the probability that light will be reflected varies awkwardly from 0 to 16% as the thickness of glass increases. We count on our rules to reproduce this result for us. The front reflection arrow is largely the same as before. What about back reflection? The reflection from back surface can be broken down into 7 steps. I will straight up run the simulation. If you want, feel free to pause and rewind to take a closer look. Overall, the front arrow has a length of 0.2, while the back arrow has two shrinks by 0.98 and one shrink to 0.2. If you put this into a calculator, you find the length of the back arrow to be 0.192. I hope you recognize this arrow, since it's the arrow that we used in the second video. There, I approximated the length of the arrow to be 0.2, but the true value is more close to 0.192. In summary, here are the rules for reflection and transmission. First, reflection from air back to air involves a shrink to 0.2 and reversing the direction. Two, reflection from glass back to glass involves a shrink to 0.2 but no turning. Three, transmission from air to glass and from glass to air involves a shrink to 0.98 but no turning in either case. I cannot resist telling you about the transmission of photons by two surfaces. Of course you know the answer. The probability of transmission is 1 minus the probability of reflection. So if the reflection chance is 15%, the chance to go to B is 85%. If the reflection chance is 8%, then the chance to go to B is 92%. That is the right answer, but we want to calculate this using the arrows. As a foreshadowing, something weird will happen. We calculate the arrow as normal. The length of this arrow is 0.98 squared or 0.96, so the probability is 92%. Something fishy is going on. If we increase the thickness of this glass, the probability of reflection changes to 16%, but the final arrow for transmission only rotates and always gives 92% when squared. What if we add the probabilities? A total of 108% is accounted for. Blimey, something is wrong. The thing is, we forgot to consider all ways light could go to B. For instance, the photon could take this path where it bounces back and forth two times before going to the detector. Like last time, I'll leave the explanation of this simulation as a sweet exercise for you to figure out. Let's see what happens. After all these steps, the arrow length is about 0.04. Get your calculator and verify that. This arrow represents yet another way the photon could have gone to end up at the detector, so we add this baby arrow to the original one and draw the final arrow. To see what happens clearly, let us also include arrows responsible for reflecting photons onto A. The setup at the top represents the probability of reflecting off the glass, while that at the bottom represents the probability of transmitting through the glass. If things are right, they should also add up to 100%. Let's send the thickness to zero and see what happens. At zero thickness, the reflection arrows cancel while the transmission ones reinforce, 
so all photons transmit through. This matches expectation because when the glass is thin enough, not much should reflect. As we increase the thickness, reflection slowly increases while transmission slowly decreases. When the reflection is at the highest of 16%, the transmission arrows point in opposite directions and reduce the final arrow, giving 84%. The cycle repeats itself and gives always 100% of light accounted for. You see, nature is very good at mathematics to keep 100% of the light included. If you look really hard, you see something weird. After certain cycles, there are some mismatch between the arrows and the probability. At the bottom, the arrows should add up to 100%, but the number is only 97%. The error is big. I'll admit this to be my poor skill of animating, but I don't mean my model is wrong. The reason this mismatch comes out is because we didn't account for triple reflections or quadruple reflections. After taking these into account, can my animation be totally correct? In fact, there are infinite arrows to account for, so I'm bad at animating these arrows at once. But remember, each time reflection occurs, it comes with a scale in 0.2. So these arrows are so tiny that we can cut ourselves some slack and say our model is not too far off the truth. That concludes the topic for today. If you liked this video, Make sure to leave a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate that. The next few videos will be the entree of the series, the beef wellington of the course. Make sure to follow because I don't want you to miss out.